All right, so if you're like me and you want a shift light, but you don't want it to be gaudy and on the dash and where everybody can see it, I think I might have a solution. I ordered one of these Jegs Super Slim Shift Lights, part number 41810, and just uh, did a little experimentation taking it apart and was able to desolder the LED and remote mount it. So I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, some of the tools you're going to need, at least a pair of pliers, doesn't have to be needle nose. Um, small little flat head, soldering iron, wire. We're also going to need a solder suction, which I actually didn't have. I had to go to my buddy's Jack, Jack's Motorsports, to have him do that part of this for me. But uh, I'll try to cover everything else in as much detail as I can. And I'm cheating a little with this part of it. So... Again, took a little flathead. You can kind of see it there. There's a little opening on either side. This will be pushed down inside there, but if you just kind of go in like this and just pry it a little bit, it'll pop up and out of there. These guys are real simple. Just use some needle nose. Obviously, I technically had already taken them out, so they're real easy now, but they just fit down onto a little square head inside on the circuit board. But they come off real easy. Hardest part is definitely getting that grommet out from the back of the shift light. It took a little baby flathead to get it done. Just be cautious. Like I kind of had to get aggressive with it, but certainly hoping to reuse that. All right, I guess moment of truth. All right, so I got the grommet pulled back a little bit here. My guess is that there's nothing screwed into this housing, that it's just pushed into place. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to go. Yep, yeah, just a little o-ring there, holding it into the housing. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. A couple minutes. Yeah. Now the fun begins. The circuit board. Some proper lighting in there. All right, so it looks like the light itself just kind of slides onto the circuit board and then is soldered in place. So there you go. Now again, this is the, I don't want to say the most challenging part because I actually still think that removing the grommet is the most challenging part. This just requires the little suction solder because this guy is literally just soldered on to the end here. So you can see my new solder points. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. So there's two on the top and two on the bottom. You just got to kind of peel this guy back a little bit. So there's basically four solder points, even though it's only two connections. So what we did was we used a soldering iron, and I say we loosely. Again, my buddy Jack from Jack's Motorsports, he had the proper tool for this. So basically all he did was just warm up the solder a little bit, and then use the suction cup to pull the solder out. Uh, I had never seen that done before, so it was kind of cool to see it. Um, but uh, but yeah, he basically just did that on each of those four connections, those two. Again, I'm trying to hold it by the wire here. And then on those two, and then literally this just fell off. So you can kind of see how you've got, let me use my little pointer here. 
this area here and this area here just fits right up over the ends of the circuit board right here so again that just fell off so then all we did was solder on some new wires here and here obviously I've cut the wire since then but at least now we still have something to work with so we're gonna do that here in just a second but now you can remote mount it to anywhere you want to all right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of go in reverse step and put this back where it was so that way I can wire it up on 12 volts and show you how it works so I'm just gonna pull this back in through there so the face just got to be pointed straight up obviously and then we just put these little guys back in there so again they're squared off it's very obvious how they go in you just kind of roll it down in there until it aligns up and as soon as it's lined up on the square just push it down in should be able to hear a little bit of a click to it so that way you know you've got it right this one actually does not click so I'm guessing I've just got it turned a little bit there we go now she's clicking and then this guy just goes right back down on there I mean, it's plastic, so I'm trying to be cautious with it, I'm not trying to overbear. I'm not going to worry about the little grommet for now. So now, technically, you know, once you've put the grommet back on here, you can mount this anywhere. I'm going to mount it underneath the dash somewhere hidden, and then just run the wires up to the cluster. I just went ahead and just temporary wired the LED back onto here and powered up the shift light. So now we can do a quick little test here. So there's a few options inside here. Easiest way is just to go to LED. It's the brightness. Let me go back to it here. So hold down the, the button at LED. So there's level four, three, two, one, and off. So I'm gonna have to cycle back through here pretty quickly. It'll, it'll wait two seconds and then shut off. So I'm gonna just keep going back and forth through here. So now you can mount this LED anywhere you want, literally anywhere. So I was actually considering taking and cutting the end of the housing off and mounting it somewhere hidden like an existing cluster, but I ended up going a step further, which if I uh, still got you here, I'm going to show you how to get even a little bit more creative. Okay, well, if you're still with me, so now that you've got the wiring completely separated from the circuit board, now you can just run any LED you want. So I went down to AutoZone and just picked up a $10 LED strip. Probably wasn't the best option because it didn't have typical wiring leads on the end. So you might want to hop on Amazon and find one that just has exposed wire to wire it to. So here's what I did on my car. I am working on a 2004 IS300 in this particular case. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take apart mine to show you how I wired it up in the back. Got two different fascias here. Uh, I'm just gonna make it easy and just remove the back one. A Couple little clips that get pulled out. A Couple others that just push in. Again, I'm sure if you looked up your particular vehicle on YouTube, you'll figure out how to get your cluster apart. 
There's hundreds of them on the IS-300, so it was easy to do. Separate it out just like that. All right, now that the mid fascia is off, so this is my spare speedo from the other cluster. This is just give you an idea of how we need to get this out of there. So it's basically just held on by all these nipples here into a female side on the back of the cluster. But there are also two screws that physically hold it into the casing. This one here and this one there. It's kind of the easiest way to show it when you're looking at the back of it. Get it into the light a little bit. So there's a screw here and a screw there. Those guys have got to come out in order to get the centerpiece out. I'm going to go ahead and take those guys out. get in there and there she goes okay obviously I already wired this one so that's why you're still seeing those blue and purple wires so now this guy should just lift right out of there again the only thing that's holding it in there are the nipples just want to be cautious coming directly straight up and out. I'm going to use a screwdriver just to cheat a little bit. Just enough to where I can get my fingers underneath there. Again, it, it feels dirty like something's going to break. I'm not going to pull this thing completely back out of there, but just to give you an idea of where we're at here. So, there's the Speedo taken out. And you can see the base of the LED inside here, just all wrapped around the edge. It's so all the way around to here, all the way around to there. I'm going to say these three bolts had to be removed. I had to lift that up a little bit in order to get it all the way in there just because there's not enough gap there or right here to actually lay it down inside there. And I don't think I really need to pull that apart to show you. It's just those three bolts and then the electronics lift out away from the base. Yeah, just 3M tape. It's all it's holding that thing in there. Like I say, if you just had some flying leads on the end of the LED, it would have been a lot easier. I had to heat up some of the, the plastic sheathing. This one was designed to be an extension of another harness. So it actually had like a male-female plug on it. Yeah, I guess I should. Uh... So as far as wiring out the back of the dash, honestly, that was the easiest part of the whole thing. With the leads terminated out this direction, it may just laying it right through the top. I mean, super simple. They don't bind with anything. I just made sure that it wasn't hitting the LED. So just tucked it in like that, rotated it around and super simple. Just like that. Wires terminated out the back. Again, now I can just run the the shift light body anywhere to make adjustments, whatnot. I'm just gonna put it up underneath the dash somewhere. Really doesn't get any easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and show you what it looks like lit up. And 
and shift light coming on. All right, well that's it for my O4IS 300. As you can see, it's got an LS in it with the, the red line raised up pretty high. Uh, that's what started this whole dashboard project anyways, was to move from the 2JZ red line of like 6,400 up to the JDM version that's like 76, 7,700. So eventually I'll have some videos of this thing actually hitting the rev limiter and making that light come on. In the meantime, I hope this inspires some of you guys to do the same thing to your own vehicles. Post up in the comments. Let me know what vehicles you're putting this on. Take care, guys.